Um, what's going on, guys? Uh, we are back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, I think this is like episode five or something, yeah, something like that like, now. We've, we've yeah. been on a roll, um, just working our way through kind of like the MIC mods. Um, and today we have another special guest, and this one is highly requested by every member. I get at least a thousand DMs. Um, I mean, right? Uh, so, first of all, before we even start, we just went on a few minutes. Thanks minute for having tangent. you guys. Yeah, of course. We just went on this whole tangent on how to say his name correctly. Members tell me that I say it fucked up all the time. So I'm glad that we can get through that. Um, and if anyone has any struggle, he says it. If you say, you know what I mean, that's perfect. Yeah. That, that just did it for that's me. That's exactly how you say it, yeah. <laughs> now it's in my head. I mean, there we I go. mean, I like it. That's cool. Wait, where are you from? Where are you right now? I live in Dubai. My parents are originally from Iran, so but I was born and raised in Dubai. I lived in States for about 10 years, and I just moved back two years ago. That's sick. Why'd you go back to Dubai? Uh, I don't know. I miss my family. There yeah. was a lot of, you know, uh, we were living in uh, Florida. It was just me, my wife, and my son. Oh, we cool. didn't have any family over there, so it was just kind of getting lonely. My son was growing up, so I wanted to kind of be closer to family, so we mm -hmm. decided to move back here. That's mm -hmm. cool. Where in Florida were you? Miami first, then Boca. Oh, wow. Boca Raton. Okay, you, yeah. You're just living in all like the fun spots of the world, what the hell? And yeah, Miami. But when we had, yeah, but when we had our kid, uh, we decided to move up. The yeah. schools were better. It was more family oriented. We couldn't really live in Miami anymore. So, yeah, it's fun when you're young, yeah, right? It was nice. And, yeah, yeah. But yeah. when you have kid, you just got to sacrifice. Yeah. And that sucks. <laughs> of move course. Move up to but, the suburbs. I mean, yeah. Dubai is beautiful, though. Dubai, I've heard, is like unbelievable. Yeah, I heard it's it a fun is. spot. Expensive. It's really cool. Canberra has a lot of good stories about Dubai. So yeah. <laughs> is, he from, is he from there too, or is he just visited there? No, he just visited here while he was on duty, I think. Oh Jesus, Canberra yeah. is a Canberra is a character, dude. I, I just go through after hours every morning. I'm like, what the fuck is this dude oh, yeah, going on? It's Wednesday change. night, but he's drinking and he's just like. I love it. Yeah. He's a savage though. I mean, his stories are pretty crazy. Yeah. That's my morning routine. You know, when I wake yeah. up, that's when he was on a rant. So I'm having my coffee, scrolling through the after hours, <laughs> reading his stories. Then I just crazy. die. Oh, I also want to mention real quick, just so everyone knows, um, I did not randomly just go girly and have this random room. I'm in my girlfriend's room. That's why you probably see her name down there too. I am on the go. Uh, so don't think that I uh, moved into this random white girly apartment, but just want to just want to make that clear. Um, I to uh, I guess to start it off, I guess we usually start it off with like you know what was your life like before trading? How did you kind of find trading? How did you kind of get into it? Um, that type yeah. of whole journey, I guess, to start it off is what we usually do. Yeah, um, sure. So if you just want to quickly kind of go over your kind of like I don't know life before trading and then like how you found it and just like kind of some of the struggles like that sure I started trading the first time that I came across trading was in I think 2014 or 2015 I joined um, one of the yeah. guys uh, Tim yeah. Sykes yeah. everybody's yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, it's all right yeah so you know I was I joined his chat room and started watching a bunch of his DVDs and that was like my first intro to trading Mm -hmm. but I think within a month I knew it was not for me. You know, it was just like going along, getting dumped on yeah. and it was so just like does, not working. Does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's what> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just buying breakouts. Uh, there was no buying dips, you know, that yeah. strategy was not known yeah. to me. So I was just yeah. like, you know, buying breakouts and all of them happened to be fake breakouts or I would just like, you know, get dumped on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like within a month later, I was like, okay, this is not for me. And I just like kind of, you know, stopped trading. But I was just like, you know, that was my first intro. Yeah. And then I think when MIC, but I knew at that time I knew about Alex and Bell. I was yeah. following them on Twitter and it was thanks to, you know, the other guys that I came across them because I, I was uh, following Alex yeah. progress. Uh, I think he was on How old are you? I sound like you. Know, How old are you at this uh, point? This was like, what, six years ago? I'm 32, so I was like 26 yeah. back okay, then. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, so then when MIC opened initially, I joined immediately for a month. Yep. And uh, then there was some business that came up. I was ju I just joined for a month to see what's going on. Yep. You know, just I didn't know you were there at first. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, I was. Just, I think I was one of the first hundred members because as yeah. soon as like uh, Bao announced that he's opening a channel, I was like, okay, holy shit, I'm in. Yeah. I want to know what this guy does because I was yeah. always like seeing him top tick everything. Yeah. I was like, how does this motherfucker top tick everything? <laughs> I want to know what's going on. Yeah. 
So yeah, at this point, you weren't profitable. I, you weren't making money, really. Like well, no, I'm not at all. Okay. No, even when I joined MIC, I didn't uh, have a single trade. I just wanted yeah. to kind of get familiar, see what's going on, what does Bao talk about. Yeah. Yeah. But at that time, I had a lot. Of, you know, I was focusing on my own business, and I was just so uh, I yeah. kind of like stopped after a month because uh, yeah. there was a lot of problems that happened. So I wanted to focus on business. I was like, you know, later on, I would get into it. And I think this was around 2018, and. I was like, I always said, okay, I was like, I'm waiting for a pullback into the market to get back in again. So, you know, it never happens mm -hmm. when COVID happened. Then I actually didn't join MIC. When COVID happened, I was just like, okay, I'm going to be buying all the large caps. I'm going to become a back yeah. holder in yeah. everything. I started like, <laughs> you know, yeah. putting everything that I had into, you know, just like scaling all the way down. I yeah. think I started buying SPY from like, in the beginning, I was, I'm just going to buy SPY. Yeah. I started like buying SPY like from like, I think like 280, 270, all through that down to 222. Yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna, just going to keep adding. I know it's eventually going to go up. And, uh, you know, so I just kind of build a yeah. bankroll from there. Yeah. And then I was getting bored. There was nothing happening. So I was like, you know what? Let me just start joining MIC again. See what's going on. And, you know, the good thing about joining later on, it was that you guys had a lot of video content. Oh, yeah, so that kind of helped me. Yeah. So actually, I think I join at the right time because there was a lot of content that you guys had yeah uh, so it was just yeah then i joined and um uh, in the beginning i was still not really sure and were you shorting at this going, point because i know you're i know you're no no in, in the beginning really? i wasn't shorting but but i found out i asked you because i, I tried shorting from e-trade e e-trade was the only platform yeah. that i had i didn't know yeah. about cobra i knew about center yeah. point at that time but i didn't want to switch to windows i was like oh no i'm, I'm a mac i just want to yeah, you know, yeah. i was comfortable yeah, with yeah, e-trade yeah. Do the parallel and I realized, and yeah. Yeah. yeah so with e-trade it was so slow so oh, i was horrible. just it yeah. was not executing well so i was like okay let me just join cobra and i think initially when i i think the first short that i did um it was a start and i at that time i didn't know what were the correct locate prices mm -hmm. so I think there was a stock. I don't even remember the ticker. It was trading around like $1, $1. Yeah, yeah. And I think I paid like 10 cents for it. I bought like a thousand share for 10 cents. <laughs> I thought that's, that was the norm. Yeah, yeah. So so I sure, and some of the guys in the chat, I don't even remember, it was like, okay, these are the lines. I'm like, okay, let me put some orders there. I didn't even know what fantasy order was. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even watch a single video. I was like, I, I just went to watch it. I was like, okay, I'm putting orders here. So at that point, I just broke even once the trade was. I was like, Oh no, like, you know, shorting is not for me. It's too expensive. You can't make money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, okay, let me go to the large cap room and see what's going on. So I started, you know, just dabbling into the large cap, but not following any strategy or anything. I was just like watching, see what these guys are playing. It was just yeah. like waiting for Joe's watch list to come. Mm -hmm. So I could just, you know, I, I was a lazy yeah. member in the beginning. Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 Everyone kind so, of is. Yeah. yeah. In the yeah. beginning, they want to be spoon fed. The early, easy yeah. way. Yeah. It's you just want to be spoon fed and, uh, you know, have it easy. Um, but at this point, I wasn't profitable at, at all because I, honestly, I hadn't put in, in, into any work. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Let me give the small cap another shot. So I saw Alex. I was like, okay, let me, because in the beginning, I would just like show up around nine. Yep. It was just like super yeah. late where all the locusts were gone. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let, let, me, let me show up early and see what's going on and start actually locating on time. And I started like, you know, reading his commentary and finding out, you know, what are his watch lists and what's his watching and everything. Mm -hmm. So I remember I looked at it like three stocks and he was like, okay, these are my lines. And I put all of my orders there and see what happens just without watching a yeah. single video. <laughs> so I see, and, and prior to that, my experience of shorting was shorting into weakness. So seeing yeah. MIC shorting into strength and resistance was something yep. new to me. So that was, I was like, holy shit, are these guys like shorting into resistance? Like, what are they doing? Like, are they, yeah. you know, it was just so, so scary <laughs> in the beginning. But I was like, okay, you know, it's Alex and Bao. I trust yeah. them. So let me put my orders and see what happens. So I put my orders in and I think it hit my first one and it just failed completely. I was like, holy shit, this... <laughs> How does he know? How does this guy know where to He's a fucking wizard. Yeah, yeah, so the first day, first green day. Second day, third day, fourth day, green in a row. I was like, holy shit. There's I remember when work. you were posting this. I remember when you first were starting to post in your green yeah. day. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, like what's ago, going but... on? Like, yeah. I was just like so amazed. I don't think I've ever had three days in a three green, ray, green days in a row at that time. So I was like so shocked. So yeah. I think within like four or five days, I contacted Tosh. I was like, 
dude, I want to become a lifetime member. And uh, I, want, I want to have access to the accelerator course because I think at that time they weren't selling yeah. it. It was just available to the lifetime. So that's when I started really, you know, digging into the videos. And I think I was green for two months straight. It was just insane. Yeah. yeah. And so I didn't really have, once I started like, you know, following Alex watches and his commentary, Yeah. I was green. I never looked back. It was just, you know, so straight I think that's power so key because so many people right now, like I think a lot of the mods who watch this will understand that. Like there's so many members that will message and be like, basically like give me the Holy grail or like basically just ask a yeah. question and kind of look for that one answer. That's like going to like click for them. Yeah. And I think like you're a great example. Like you're someone that you joined, you know, at first, like kind of just like you said it yourself, you're just being a lazy member, just not yeah, doing anything absolutely. Like videos. And you went out of your shell and you stepped up and like watched, watch the videos, follow the commentary. Like, I yeah. mean, the amount of, people I know who tell me who message me and be like what is Alex watching and it's as simple as like you really didn't like click the watch list button to see like what he's looking at yeah. and exactly. so I think that speaks like super high volume for you is that you actually just put in the work and it shows how quickly from just putting in the effort that you started actually like noticing growth absolutely it, it was just an instant uh success for me it was just insane and the thing the thing that I did I trusted Alex and Val I yeah. think a lot of people are afraid of trusting their lines and shorting into uh, yeah. strength. Yeah. I didn't have that fear. I was like, okay, these guys, they know what they're doing. Yep. And why, if, if, if I'm, if I'm learning from them, I want to trade like them. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm going to trust their process and trust their lines because you know, it, it was just working so well for me. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. this is how they do it. This is what I'm supposed to do. I get a better risk reward on my trades mm -hmm. and it was an instant, um success and the thing that i realized was i didn't start dabbling into a lot of different strategies mm -hmm. yeah because in the beginning i heard like low hanging fruit and then i saw that you know not all of them pop a lot of them that you know yeah. they end up fading they don't pop and i end up spending a lot on low cases yeah. in the beginning i was locating everything everything on the watch list i was like then i you know later on i learned how to kind of uh you know shortlist those but yeah to me it was just like okay i learned one strategy really mm -hmm. well master it instead of just you know focusing on i don't know large cap options dabble into a lot of different things because yep. there's a lot of videos and you could you know get overloaded with information you can you know yep. kind of get lost so for me it was like okay what is what is alex uh james bear what are they focusing on and i'll just focus on it. and it was just basically the broken stocks on uh, day one and yeah that's what i just primarily focus on you don't really trade like the the hot check much i don't see it unless it's really backside that's the only time i've ever seen you really yeah it, right i i do locate but yeah. i just wait for them to you know get a death candle or stuff yeah. and that's when i attack but i just usually have it just in case yeah because it, you know. it, it's eventually going to come in the beginning i was like terrified like when yeah. alice would say so avoid the hot chick i was like okay that's i'm not touching it yep. you know these guys they know what they're talking about and in the beginning I remember the first month or two, I was just trading the first hour, just like Alex, and I would yep. stop. But then I realized that I'm missing a lot of knowledge yep. being dropped by Bao. Yep. So there oh, was yeah. one day that I started sticking around, see what Bao does. Yep. Yep. And that's, that, that's when it was completely game changer for me, seeing yep. how he trades throughout the day and what he thinks about the line. I kept constantly asking, I was like, what are you looking for? Is, are these the yeah. lines that you're looking for? and um, we would be doing the same trades over sure. and over again and that's the misconception about like trading after 10 30 like i think harry we've talked about this before it's a lot is that you you know just because alex stops at 10 30 right and i do it too because for yeah. me what always ended up happening was if there was a runner uh, after 10 30 i would end up like if i was up let's say like a thousand dollars or something and then I'd, i would just be like up eight hundred dollars like after a small tiny loss i'm like oh, i should be done and i do another trade and i'd be up six hundred dollars and it just so for some people it doesn't work but like if right. you if you are kind of like i mean and you can want to stay and learn and like also trade like there's nothing wrong with that um and i think that that is also something like kind of impressive that you can like you just stayed and learned i mean i think so yeah. many people are right. so quick to like get out away from the screens fast where like you're just like you're putting in like extra effort to get education through like bow and like what in harry stays all day like everybody stays all day Absolutely. for the most part yeah and i and think like you, you, Keep going. You, you can keep going. But. Yeah. In, in order, the thing that a lot of people need to realize, the reason that Alex is able to make this amount of money 
trading one hour a day is because he's worked seven years. Yep. You know, for somebody who's new, you need a lot of screen time in order to learn about, you know, stuff, death candle, when is the backside starting? Yep. You know, Alex is able to make that amount of money because of the amount of experience he has. Yep. I don't think anybody is able to do that if you just like trade one hour a day. You need screen time in the beginning when For you're sure. starting. Yeah. You need a lot of screen time. It doesn't mean that you need to be trading all day. Yeah, uh, but you need to be looking and kind of figuring out, okay, when is the backside for hot chick? Yeah. Waiting for those and seeing those moves constantly over and over again that, you know, you're able like to, yeah. you know, top tick or, you know, just being able like, you know, to short for the sure. bounces. Yeah, Harry, you said this, like how many people are, are asking you like how to get those like dollar moves on a bounce? Oh, all the time. Like, dude, I've been doing this for seven years. Like I've been yeah. doing this for a long ass time. Like, yeah. And like, I, I think that like, I definitely like, see, the thing is with shorting after 1030 is that two things can happen. Number, number one is the slow grind. Like we saw it on PPSI on Friday where I got up from like five bucks to 580. Everyone's like, oh, how did you get that? But it's like, you know, five wasn't breaking down. It hit five. It would come back up. Couldn't break five again. You know, it would come back up, try and break five, five, ten. Couldn't break it again. And I noticed that you could clearly tell that people were fighting this stock all the right. way up. It was slowly just grinding yeah. down. Slow. And that's screen time as a long, like a that, low, right? You know, but yeah. also as a short seller, there can be times where, um, you know, we get a giant death candle at 1030 and then it just fades all day because there's just like no lack of demand after we get that right. seller, that death candle and on every pop, it's kind of getting sold. And we also saw that with the other one, I forget what it was called, but there was one that just faded and there was one that kind of stayed around and lingered. So I think it's like definitely as a short seller, like identifying the price action that's trapping you. Like, and it starts with like, you're, you're trying to short it and you take a 10 cent loss and you're like, Oh man, like I can easily make this back. Like the stock's like a piece of shit. Right. Then you take another 10 cent loss. You're like, Oh man, like I can easily make this back size right. up a little bit more size up a little bit more. And then you're like, Holy shit. Like what the fuck that, did I just do? You know? And it's just because it's exactly. a slow grind and you don't really expect it. But, the buyers just keep stepping up over and over and over and over again. And it's like, this should have dumped a long time ago, but we're still now above VWAP. And I was saying in the chat, like, like, Hey, like, you know, you guys <laughs> might want to be warned. And there, there will be some people who are just like, no, like the stock. Yeah. Is not, right. But you know, it's the abnormal action that can really get you as a short, like after zombie. And it's usually that like low volume grind. The creeper, yeah, exactly. That. And it's easy okay. to go parabolic in order yeah. to stop all the shorts out and to go lower. Because yeah. once you have no more shorts covering, all your bitters are gone and you know, the thing's probably gonna fail. Long to, yeah, as long to sell. I think something that, that I mean has done and you've preached about this in chat and I, I think now knowing how like new you are, like it, it is pretty impressive is like, you say like after 1030, like you, ha you take a step back and you identify where like the best spots for you to get in are. And that's where you'll set Absolutely. your orders. Whereas like some people will sit there and I, I used to do this and this is what caused me to lose so much was I would trade every bounce, every bounce and yes. short cover, short cover. And then the range would tighten. You don't even notice. And then you get fucking spot, like coil, like what is that about called a coil? Like you just shoot up and you lose. Whereas like your orders are sitting at the lines where you want it to be. You're not right. trading like every little bounce. Bow can do that. Bow, bow is different. Bow is like a, an algo. The guy can trade every bounce, every dip, whatever. But like for the majority, like the 90% of us, like your approach, I think makes the most sense. And how did you even like develop that sort of um, like discipline and understanding like so fast? Sorry, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Uh, I can hear, I can hear you. you. I, I can hear you. Let me see. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Okay. Some technical difficulties. Okay, so let me see. Okay, I can hear you guys now. Can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you hear uh, my question or should you want me to repeat it? Yeah. Repeat it, please. Okay. Sure. So I was, I was basically just asking like how you so quickly developed the understanding to like wait for your spots instead of trading like every little bounce. Cause like that's something that so many new people fall victim to, but like you seem to early on have that discipline and you can teach it pretty well. So I was kind of curious how you came across that, like how you yeah. developed it. No, because the thing is, I tried like shorting every bounce and trading mm -hmm. all day, and I just realized that my risk reward is, you know, it, it's not yeah. good enough. 
because mm. the thing is like, what, there, there's a point that comes that you know the stock goes so low yeah that if it pops like 10 cents if i short it my risk is going to be like a dollar to make like another 10 cents or 20 mm. cents it's, it's just exactly. so i realized that i needed to bounce enough for me to be able to scale and mm. to be able to have a good reward because you want the longs to be able to take some profits you yeah. know what i mean so you want the longs to be there selling in the spots that you're planning on shorting so yeah. you have that compound effect of shorts and um, sell uh, buyers who are selling at that point that's when you really get the stocks to fade again yeah, yeah. and being you know bow because that bow says like you know i want the stock to pop enough to give me a good risk reward and yeah just I mean, watching you, right exactly. you've developed this so early which is crazy like i think we've interviewed enough traders now and like had good conversations with people about how early on it's just so hard for them to like understand this stuff and i think something with you and i i i save your charts actually because i always send them to people how you have developed this ability to stop out on a dime like i don't right. know what it is like you just have this like Thing. Like, I, like when you're shorting VWAP, right? Like you'll see it, like you'll short it. If it's wrong, you're gone, you're covered and whatever. And like, it's crazy that if you really only been like with us, like in trading like this since like COVID, like that's March, not that long. Yeah, March it's or, not long. I, I think this May, that's when I really started. Like it was yeah. second of May, that's when I really started following MSC. See, that's crazy to me. Like that's like so impressive. Like Harry, I don't know about you, but like for me, like my biggest problem as a new uh, short seller, like, and I know Harry yeah. used to be shorting, but like, or even longing, like I just wouldn't stop out. Like I would be like, right. I'm going to short a view app projection. And if it goes 20 cents against me, I'd still be kind of like, not frozen, but I'd be like, you know, oh, I'm, I, I'm going to be right. But instead you right. have taken the approach of like, I'm going to stop out and then I'll reattack when it, it gets to my line. Right. And like, do you have anything for like new traders to kind of fall, like to, like, you know what I mean? Like, do you know, can you give some advice to new traders who are struggling there? Cause that is a big struggle for everybody. That's like 90% of what I, I get asked. I think one of the good things with me was I didn't have a lot of bad habits. The only bad habit that I had was shorting into weakness. So mm -hmm. I didn't trade long enough to build any bad habit. So when I joined MIC, it was, you know, my mind was completely clear. If you're joining MIC, I think just forget about everything that you've learned so far and just start from the beginning yeah. and trust your lines. So like it's as simple as that. And to me, I remember even my wife in the beginning was so suspicious. She was like, yeah. she was like, what do you mean? Like shorting these crappy stocks. I'm like, yeah. I'm like working so long, like, for it. <laughs> two months, like you know, I've been consistent. I've never had it. So, you know, that's when she started. Yep. It was just like, you know, unlearning all the bad habits yep. mm -hmm. and just trusting the process. You know, it's just like so vague that everybody said, oh, trust the process. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so like, you know, but trusting your line. And I just like genuinely trusted Alex and Bao because I knew about him. I read the legendary stories of Bao yeah. and I wanted to trade like him. So yeah. if this is the process that he follows, why should I go and do something differently? And a lot of people think that they're smarter than us. That's something that I never thought. I was like, yeah. okay, these guys, they know what they're talking about. Yeah. They've seen these type of moves numerous times. Yeah. So I just trusted the muds and um, the lines. It was as simple as that. I didn't try to um, make it complicated. Yeah. The, the interesting part about MIC is like simplifying the process. You know, I've yeah. dabbled like with, with two different chat rooms. It was just not for me. I was just, I swear to God, I was so close to canceling my membership because when I saw how expensive the locate was, yeah. with, 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 I was like, oh, maybe this is not for me. Cause like, you know, and I was yeah. thinking about, like, you know what? Let me give it another try. Let me follow Alex's watch list. And yeah. it's do almost that. so dumbed down that you feel stupid following it. <laughs> like, exactly. if that makes sense. Like, yeah. it's as simple as, like, even like Harry, like the shit you do, it's like you're drawing your line and that's it. And like, you then obviously, like, as you get experience, like, you use things like tape and you, you can kind of develop, you know, tools to, to develop your strategy right. more. Yeah. But like, in the beginning, it really is as simple as, like, dude, you take this little drawing tool you draw lines <laughs> where we tell you to and like where you like learn to and like that's it. Absolutely. And I remember in the beginning, I saw before I was a mod, I kept saying yeah. you guys repeating the same thing over and like, why are they keep repeating the same thing? Like, don't people like, you know, read it. Like this was, I was thinking. And then I became a mod and I started like receiving all the messages. 
I'm, now I understand why you guys kept repeating yourself. Because yeah. no matter how much you repeat, there are some people that they think they're smarter than the market. They're like, yep. So yeah, but exactly. done, I did it for years. Time dude. long after a death candle, you know. I'm like, <laughs> oh, like, I mean, and there are some traps. Trust me, above VWAP that I see a lot. But like in my videos, I say like, after you see a death candle, wait like four or five minutes. Don't just go long right away because that's usually not a great spot to long. And right. same people over and over again just go long right after a death candle. Like, oh, I thought that was a good pullback. I'm like, no, bro. Like, look at this stock right now. Like like watch my videos i say wait like five to ten minutes after we get a dramatic move like that because like you know it's there's a lot of volatility there's a lot of people panicking there's a lot of people maybe trying to go short there's so many things going on that right. you just need to wait and be patient and then um you know same guy again like next day went long right after a death candle i'm like bro what are you doing like why'd you just do that again i told you yesterday and it was like literally three days straight before I'm like, okay, if you're going to DM me the same exact chart again, I'm just going to stop responding. Right. <laughs> obviously not listening to what I'm saying, you know? Well, it's funny okay. because like I, I went, um, I went into my Twitter and like, I was looking at old DMS and I remember when I first started like trading because there was only a short period of time before where I started and then MIC started. So I had DM'd Alex and I was asking him questions about sizing, about like where to short, like, and he repeats the same shit. This is going back almost, you know, two and a half years or whatever. And it's, it's like, literally, he's like, wait for a death candle, bro. He calls it a kiss of death back then. He's like, wait for a death, a kiss of death. He's like, short pops after that. Um, you yeah, know, you smell blood in the water. Yeah, so everything. Like, everything he said two years ago is the same shit he says every right. single day today. Yeah. And it's funny. So, like, you say that, like, everyone's always like, oh, why are you repeating this? Why are you repeating this? Because it's, it's what works. It's just, like, human emotion. And I think ego gets in the way of that. Yeah. And I think that's something for you. I mean, that's pretty cool. Is like, you don't seem to have any ego. Like, you don't seem no. to have an ego. You don't seem arrogant. And I think that probably is what like propelled you to go like forward pretty quick. Um, and I mean, have you kind of always been like, like, because you said you had a business, right? Right. Have you been yeah. some? Because I know owning a business too. Like, you kind of can't have an ego. Because if you do, like, you will just get run over. Like in any Absolutely. aspect. Yeah. And have you, is that always been you? Like every, like, was your business like a, a large portion of your life before trading? Like yes. your main thing? Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, I think accepting loss early on, understanding that there's going to be a loss, not having any, any fear of loss helped me. Also, um, I, I used to play poker on a regular basis on weekends. Yeah. So yeah. playing <laughs> poker, you know, there's a lot of risk management. You can't win every pot. You're going to be losing, you know, so you can't have ego, um, you know, in poker. So yeah, that kind of, of helped me with trading, being able like, you know, to wait for your spot. And one of the reasons that I'm able to be patient is because there are times that you sit at the table, you get, you continue to get crappy cards and mm -hmm. you just have to be patient. So that's, that's how it is. That's why I'm patient with, um, you know, the hot chicks. I know the backside is going to come. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. It could be at 11, it could be at or it could yeah. not come it, there's a matter of time yeah. i know it's, it's going to give me a spot to enter so that's why that kind of helped me you know having that background and you know yeah you, now do you still have the business do you still i do yeah and that's, that's cool. uh, my primary um source of income still you cool. know I, I do this uh as i don't want to say as a hobby because i take everything that i do yeah. seriously like, i play poker even on weekends i take yeah. it very seriously. when there's money involved i'm very yeah. competitive i take it seriously yeah and I like to go up the ladder pretty quickly because I remember the first time that I remember I played poker, I was playing one, two, and I had no idea. And my friend's been playing for a long time. He was playing one, two. So as soon as I learned, I was like, okay, we need to go up this thing. So I started yeah. playing two. My friend was like, dude, I've been playing for two years and I haven't like played. So and I remember I played two, five, I won like 500 bucks. And I was like, all right, what, what is a buy-in for 510? They're like, it's a minimum of $500. I'm like, okay, let's go play 510. Yeah. <laughs> Just immediately, same night, I go there, I play there, and I, I think like within an hour, I went like a $1,500. So I'm like, okay, let's call it a day. So I was just always eager to, you know, go up the stakes. It's and a trade in traders, dude. All traders, I swear, they have this like, at least the successful ones, they have this mentality of like, whatever they're doing, they're going to do it 100%. 
Yeah. Like there's no like half assing whatever. It could be poker, be trading, could be fucking yeah. working out. When they get into it, it's like their focus is there. Yeah. And that right. allows them to be like really good at it. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's how, you know, that's how it was. Like in, initially I was just like, you know, trading with 100, 200 shares. I wasn't like thinking about like making money. I just wanted to yeah. kind of, you know, make sure that, you know, the process is working. And as soon mm -hmm. as it was working well, I yeah. just like went up, you know, from 100, 200 shares to a thousand shares immediately. Why? Because I could take a hundred dollar loss. It wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, I, I could take that kind of loss, but, and it was just like, yeah. How do you We're, devise your time between the business and trading? I get that question 30,000 times a day. Like, how do you devise uh, your time? In? Because of the difference in time zone, you know, I wake up around like seven, eight o'clock in the morning. So the pre-market starts, let's say 7 a.m. is about 4 p.m. here. Yeah. So wow. I have about eight hours of time to work on my business, go to the gym, run my errands and everything. So I'm like waking up 7, 8 working all the way till midnight or 1 a.m. So That's I have crazy, like about 18 yeah. hours a Another day. Another thing I think like owning a business is that like you were able to trade the way that you were because you weren't solely relying on trading Absolutely. for the, the money, like for the food on your table. And I think that right. is a big important part because everyone in this game wants to quit their job. That's the first thing they want to do. Right. But your mindset should be, okay, I have my job as money. Now I can be super, super patient in the market. Not like, oh, I want to quit this job. I don't care about that money. I need to be making money here now. And Absolutely. so you were able to be patient and trust the watch list and trust the lines because, you know, you're like, okay, I have a business. I'm doing pretty well. You know, this is like, as much as you did take it seriously, it's still more of a hobby phase. Right. And it's not the, it's not like a primary or like a secondary. It's like, you know, hobby, whatever. I'm going to just try and learn this. Right? right. And that gives you the opportunity to be so, so patient rather than trying to short every bounce rather than trying the, Oh, I'm going to be rich tomorrow rather than, you know, you're already yep. Googling Lamborghinis and expensive <laughs> clothes Absolutely. and I'm all ready to go. I'm going to be wearing Gucci tomorrow. And I think that's a really important part. That's what of. I always tell people. I tell them, if you're trading with your rent or food money, you're going to lose. Like, yeah. you know, and when I see some people, you know, they find consistency for a week or two and all of a sudden they want to, you know, quit their job. I'm like, no, dude, you need to at least be consistent for two years. Have your rent and food money saved up for at least a year and then have a capital of trading because you're going to be making emotional decisions constantly. Yep. You're going to be like, okay, I need to be making X amount of money every day in order to, you know, pay my rent. It's just not how it's going to work. You know, I remember you when the pandemic started and, um, and our, my business closed because we were closed for three months. And at that time, like I wasn't taking a paycheck um, for I starting in, I don't know, May, like end of May. And obviously I couldn't go in and cut either. So I just had no extra money coming in. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, well, I've been consistent for a long time. Like it doesn't really matter, but it's funny. Like even for me who has been doing this for so long, when the, when the tables kind of turned and like trading was my only income, I remember the first day it was no different than any day, but it still was kind of like emotionally like, okay, this is weird. Like I feel right. like every dollar I'm trading with now is like my chips, like my last chips that I like need to protect and like change. So it's like, it really does. Like, I've never understood the rush to quit. Like, I understand the, like, trading to have free time. But, like, even for me, like, I have zero intention of, like, getting rid of the business anytime soon or, like, not working because I like also human interaction. Like, I love, like, MIC is great because we get to talk to people that do what we, what we do. But the ability to go to a business and, like, also keep your brain going like that. Like, I'm a huge believer in, like, once you start slowing down, you, like, you get older, like you start to like really, like your brain will slow down. Whereas for me, it's like, dude, I love being up at like four or 5 a.m., like working really hard for like five hours and then going to do something else and like yeah. keeping different parts of my brain going. Yeah. Like for you, like, do you plan on keeping the business forever? Like if, if trading just exploded for you and it was like ridiculous income, would you still keep the business or how, yes. what is your kind of plans like for the future? Yeah. No, yeah, because the business, it's an online business. So oh, I don't cool. have to, you know, the money keeps coming in without me having to put any work in. That's I have cool. staff that are taking care of it. And that gives me the freedom to travel, to spend time with family if I want. Yep. Day trading doesn't give me that freedom. Day trading requires me 
to be there all yeah. the time. If, I, if I'm taking some off traveling and I'm, if I'm not day trading, I could be losing money. So yeah. ulti- and the thing is like, you know, ultimately my goal is to do more long-term swing trades because yeah. I don't want to be, you know, this is an extra income right now. I have the time, but I want to be able to also spend time with family because right now yeah. I've sacrificed a lot of time in order to get really good at trading. Yeah. But ultimately, maybe a year from now, I want to move in more into maybe options, maybe swing in long term. So I don't have to work for it. Because like imagine if you get sick one day or yep. two days, if you stop trading, there's no money coming in. If that's your only source of income, um, you know, that's not going to. So that's why, like, I think like, it's even really important for traders that become successful to diversify, you know, whether you go into real estate, yep. do some long term you know, invest in other businesses, something that, you know, it's going to make sure that if you're not day trading, there's still money coming in. Yeah, I think right. that's really important because like, if you're just going to be day trading all the time, you're basically, you're, you're not truly free ever. You know what I mean? Cause that requires your time to yeah. be able to make money. Exactly. I no, I completely agree. And another thing I think is that like for James, like when James talked about his business and when you talked about yours, like, the common, and even for me, like when I was learning, I was in college, but I also knew that I had a plan B to kind of fall back on. So that, that in that phase of my career, that was like the patience phase where I learned how to be really, really patient, just like kind of Eamon's talking about. And so I stopped kind of trying to long every bounce. I stopped kind of trying to, you know, and I just would wait for my spots. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm in college right now. Like I literally had like 4.0 GPA. And I was also trading and like, you know, as I talked about in like another podcast, I'm pretty sure like almost no social life. Like I'd go out on the weekends, but like I pretty much gave it all up for school and trading because this is what I wanted to do, you know? And, you know, it's funny that that ended up being kind of like the patience phase. Like those two years of college allowed me to be more patient instead of rushing it because I had that mindset of, okay, like, you know, I, I, I think the patience is the number one lesson here. Like that is definitely number one where it's not like you're FOMOing in at every line. It's not like you're, you know, trying to scale from three to four or from three to five, you know, you're like, okay, I want to go short at 340. I'm stopping out at 350 if it doesn't work and that's it. Right. Instead of like trying to get every line, trying to FOMO in here, trying to, and those people, like I see people all the time with too many lines on their charts. That isn't a sign of like, no knowledge. That is a sign that you are trying to rush the money, in my opinion, because when people have five, six, seven, eight lines, like, you know, that's just, that's like, you know, you might as well just keep buying a scratch ticket because like, that's like, that's just not what we preach here. Like Alex talks about like in the morning, you notice how he has two, three lines, right? Where it's like maybe like 380 and 390 and four bucks. And that's all he wants to go short. That doesn't mean he's going to go short at 350, right? But for the people who are trying to scale all the way up, that says more about your own mental state in trading, in my opinion, than the actual like process or anything else, because you are trying to rush it. Like, you know, there was one guy where I told him, you know, you should just focusing on longing outer lines where you always stop out because you're always going in too early, getting stopped out. And then the stock's actually bouncing. Right. It's funny. Like he didn't really have the patience for that. You know, he, he kept kind of trying to long the inner lines and that's a sign of, Oh, I want to grow my account. Oh, I want to rush it rather right. than saying, I'm going to wait for that reliance. I'm going to be super, super patient. You know, I'm going to like, it's really the patience I think out of this that really got you to where you are. And I mean, that was, that's really it. That's the big takeaway that I get from this. Okay. Absolutely. Can, you guys can hear me, right? I just yep. off my yep. step. Um, I think that the, like a, such a misconception is like, everyone's like the faster I make money, the faster we get to my goals. Like, like for you, I mean, like you talk about like your goals are spending time with your family and like, and all that. And it's like, it's funny that the more patient you are, the faster you're actually going to get there. But everyone's in such a rush. They're like, I need to make all this money right now. I need to like, and you think every bounce, every opportunity, every dip, everything is, has to be a trade. And like, that is what I mean. Like I, I've had so many people message me and be like, you know, I mean, it's been trading not that long, like, you know, or like just whatever, like, how is he so quick and so easy at this? And it's like, it's, that is one of the most impressive things that of anyone we've interviewed is just your patience level. And yeah. I think your patience is what's getting you to your goals, like that much faster. It's Thank really you. More- I, think, I think less, something that I learned as well, less is more. Yeah. Um, exactly. I remember exactly. now I have, you know, in the beginning, I started just with a laptop. 
and I could only fit about three or four, I think about four charts. Yeah. And that kind of helped me as well to get rid of a lot of noise. You know, Alex, uh, Alex would say, okay, I'm only focusing on these stocks. Those were the, my only uh, stocks here. And I remember I was, I was trading on Friday while I was away and I was on my laptop and I just went late in the day. I was like, okay, let's see, you know, it was raining, staying in the hotel. I was like, let me see what's going on. And the first thing that I did, go to watch list, see what Alex is watching. Yeah. I didn't even open, I didn't even open uh, my scanner or anything. Alex was like, okay, I'm, these are the ones that I'm focusing on. I went, see there's locate, yes, there's locate. Brought two of them. I just traded those two. I didn't have like three monitors or anything. Yeah. Just being able to focus on those two stocks. I was, uh, you know, I made money on both of them. Cause the thing is like something like when you're trading only in two things, you could size up more. Yep. just trading two charts instead of like trying to nail 10 different stocks at the same time. And I honestly, like, you know, just recently I got two additional monitors mm -hmm. and I'm starting to think that that is too much for me. Sometimes like there's too much noise. I'm trying to get rid of a lot of the charts, maybe just like have a bigger charts. Cause I realized I would be trading a lot better when yep. there was like you know, less noise. I would be seeing a lot of different things. So I've been actually thinking of like either just like getting rid of one of them or just, yeah, you know, make the charts bigger so I don't have to look at a lot of different things. Funny you say that. So on Friday, on Friday night, I stayed in and I was just doing charting and stuff. And I have, so I have three, um, like 32 inch vertical monitors, right? And for the longest time, I kept rearranging my charts so I can have more. I can have like, I'd have like 15 different charts in my main screen to watch. And then on the other charts, I have long term, everything. And on Friday, I actually got rid of one whole screen and I made it just the chat. And then my middle screen that I focus on is literally just the three stocks that I'm looking at the most. And yeah. I actually got rid of it. So I'm the other charts, like I got rid of the montages so I can see other charts, but now I'm just, I'm trying to do that where I just want to focus more on what's in front of me. Right. And I love that. I love that you said that. Cause that actually even confirms in my head that I was just doing the same thing. The last time I had a red day, actually it was funny. I, I was up on six, I was in six different tickers. And I was up on all of them and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to focus, where to look. And all of a sudden they all bounced and I lost them all right. of them. And I was like, I've what? been there many times. Yeah. Uh, so I see yeah. a lot of new traders, they join immediately and all of a sudden like, they have like three monitors. They're on their PDT. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why are you spending <laughs> money? Why just like, you know, allocate that money to your trading account that can actually, yeah. you know, help yeah. you grow faster. Yeah. And because, I'm not joking. I think I went from one monitor to three just a month ago. So I was trading consistently profitable just with one monitor with six charts for about like five, six months. And I didn't have any problem. Yeah. And I was like, and I think the only reason that I did it is because I wanted to have like my E-Trade as well to be able to look at some of the large caps. Yep. Otherwise I would have been fine with one monitor yep. still. Um, I'm positive like I'm pretty sure that the bear still trades on a laptop and That's like amazing. yeah and it's not because bear is like a very talented trader and like but he is a great example right he focuses on one ticker yeah. and if it fits his like his process and like what he wants to trade then mm -hmm. he focuses there on one laptop you got shit on him like I'm always like dude what are you trading on like coconuts and like what the hell are you doing but like for him it works and it's true it's like I mean just like the you just, it's just the less is more concept like I think out of this whole episode, the best thing everyone can take away and rewatch the part where he taught, where I'm talking about that, because if you can just stay patient, you're actually going to get to where you want to go faster. And it's not always about nailing everything, hitting everything. It's just sticking to what you know, what you do. And you're going to get, the, I mean, you're going to get your goals that much quicker. Right. I mean, Absolutely. I, yeah, I think that you know what, what I love about MIC is that there is equal amount of opportunity here. Mm -hmm. We have the same video content that is available to everybody is what I watch, yeah. uh, but you, you get like completely different outcomes. Um, and you know, one of the prime example of that is, um, you know, my wife, she watched yeah. the same videos that I watch, but our outcomes are completely different. Why? Because she has fear of losses. Yeah. And that's, that, that's something that people need to get over. Fear of oh, yeah. There's going to be a loss. Put your ego aside. Take yep. that loss. It's something that I learned in poker. It's not just one session. It's a long session. It's day in, day out. It's just one long session. It's okay to get up, 
cut your losses and leave. There's going to be another day, but some people think that, oh, they need to be green every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's just not how it works. And a lot of people think that working hard is going to equal to success. Mm -hmm. I think something that is more important is working smart is yeah. just, you know, what you do, how you do it is way more important than, uh, you know, how hard you work. And I think the quality of you, the work that you put in is really important. Yeah. Um, you know, there are construction workers that work really hard, but they don't yeah. make the same amount of money. They work harder than us. And yeah. I remember um, my son initially, that's what I told him. I was like, you know, in order to become successful in life, you know, you need to work really hard. And it was like, oh, that's really cool. When I grow up, I want to become a construction worker and clean the windows of the buildings. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's not actually <laughs> how it works. So, you know, I had to explain to him, you know, it's that's true. not how life works, unfortunately. So yeah, it's true. I mean, some of the hardest workers I know actually like don't do very well, like financially. And, that's, and they're fine. I mean, that's their lives and stuff. But and that's I think that I think that in trading, like it's very much like we tell everyone watch the videos over and over. But the thing is, like, you could, I could sit down with one of my, a like, couple of my friends and who don't work that hard and they'd, they'd just watch it mindlessly and not gain anything from it. Right. And you seem to have found the path of, like, watching the right videos and, like, that pertain to you and then, like, asking the right questions that way. Yeah. Right. I think something that is also really important when you watch something and you learn something, I think it's really important to put it into practice. Yeah. Really soon. You know what I mean? Because if you just, like, watch a lot of videos and you don't put it into practice, if you, to be honest with you, I've never paid per trade it. Yeah. I got in, yeah. I was like, I need to feel the pain. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, the thing is that with paper trading, I, I actually set up on TOS one time and I just kept buying, buying. Yeah. There's, there's no emotion. Yeah. I, I know you know, this is not real money. So there was no emotion involved. And something that I love about stock market is that anybody can participate. You know, there yeah. is no discrimination. Yeah. There is no age. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you're white, black, yeah. it doesn't matter. Any, everybody has the equal amount of opportunity to participate in this market. And there is no room for victimization. You know, you cannot, you know, victimize yourself. The market doesn't care about your feelings. And, you know, yeah. we're all capable of trading the same thing, but you have 90% of them that fail. And it only comes down to risk management, patience, and FOMO. Yeah, that's so, really it, yeah. That's crazy. It's it's like I remember when I got into trading, like initially, like I remember thinking, like it's such a technical thing, like how it's anyone can do this. It's like you have to be stupid not to make money trading. When I and this was I wasn't making money. I just like was like, oh, like you do X, Y, and Z, and you're gonna make money. And like little did I know how much of the emotional side was like like my biggest like uh, roadblock as a trader was the emotional side. I could never get past like missing a trade. I could never get past like missing an opportunity or being read and that took me a long time to like get over mm -hmm. and i had this one day where i remember i was like so depressed because i was just like not consistent yet and i was like beating myself up like i felt like i was putting in the right work but like i was miserable because i couldn't get it and i looked at myself in the mirror and i'm like dude the market doesn't fucking care about your feelings it doesn't care if you make a million dollars if you lose a million dollars no one gives a shit like you need to just focus on like what's in front of you focus on yourself and you will get there but without Absolutely. patience i just said this to i was on a member call the other day and i just said to the guy because he said you know he's always getting in too early and i was like well i think it, there comes a point where you have to tell yourself like if you can't be patient then you need to quit trading if you can't do this like if you can't just be disciplined and patient you're never going to make it right and if you want to yeah. make it bad enough you're going to do it you're going to change your mindset you're going to find a way it. yeah yeah you're sure. right. here's the thing I don't think trading is for everybody either. It's a tough job. You know, yep. it's a tough mental job and you know, it's not for everybody. You know, if here's the thing, it's a sad truth. If you've been at MIC for two years and you're not consistent or profitable, then maybe this is not for you, you know, because I've been to a lot of places and there is no other simple uh, process than MIC. It just doesn't exist. I, at least I haven't seen it. So, yep maybe this is not for you. And I think that there has to be a time that you have to be honest with yourself because I remember growing up, I loved playing soccer. I wanted to become a yeah. soccer player, but there was a point that I came in my life. I was pretty good at it, but I wasn't yeah. the best. So yeah. I sat down and I was like, am I going to really be wasting my time? Even though it's my passion, even though I love it, but there, there is a time that you have to be honest with yourself. 
Am I going to make it? Am I going to be one of the best players in the world? Or am I going to be wasting my time? And so that yeah. was the time I was like, you know what? This is not for me. So Even like six months ago, dude, I was, I hit a point, uh, it was about six months ago. It was right actually before the pandemic started. I remember like seeing like Alex's PLs every day and some of the other guys. And I'm like, dude, why the fuck is that not me? Right. And I actually had to be honest with myself that like, I wasn't putting in the amount of work I should be still. Like I was still like, I thought I was, I was watching like videos when they got posted. I was like going through main chat, I was doing everything, but I wasn't like actually digesting it. I was just doing it robotically to kind of say that I was doing it instead of like actually watching the content, like watching the education and then putting it in, like you said, into practice to learn more about it. And I think everybody, like you said, if you've been here for a long time and like you're struggling, like there's going to come a point where you need to look at yourself and say like, am I doing everything to become profitable? Right. If the answer is no, then you know your problem. If the answer is right. yes, then obviously change something yeah. up or find a new profession. Yeah, but I do also, believe everyone who's still in MIC like has the ability to get there. It's just, you have to be honest with yourself and upfront. Like, am I going to get this or not? And if not, what's the, like, what's my fucking problem? Like, right. yeah. I'm doing it. I also yeah. think that like, you know, cause there are stories like Nico where it did take him <laughs> 10 <laughs> years to become profitable. Wow. Right, ten years. Eight, eight years, eight years. Or, oh, it's no, eight four, years. Yeah, okay, eight, well. eight fucking years though. Okay, like, eight, yeah. eight. But there was not, here's the thing. Back then, there was not a lot of good True. education yeah. content that we have right now. Right yeah. now, we're living in an era that whether you want to trade or whether you want to do anything, there's so many free content. Like some of the free content that MIC puts on every Wednesday with Tosh. Yeah. Those are golden. Even if you're not a member, and sometimes I'm thinking, like, why are they putting all these? Why are they like showing all of their free strategies online? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so much. we have a lot of free content. It's a lot easier right now to become yeah. successful than it was 10 years ago. There's not a lot of chat rooms. MIC wasn't there. There was not a lot of good things. So that's why, you know, it took them longer because yeah. they were just yeah. trading a lot of different things. There was no strategy back then. Yeah, dude, I was just in Jersey with Alex and like we were sitting there like high as fuck. And we were like laughing our ass off that like, how is it possible that like this like, gypsy turkish kid from jersey and this like white boston kid became friends and, like i had the ability to network with a seven-figure trader right and like same like harry like i would never have met you Val. i mean like none of you people who are in all different parts of the country the world whatever like that is like the craziest thing in like today's like in a climate and environment that we're able to do that Whereas, like, imagine trying to be a trader, like, in 1999, like, what the, who the fuck are you going to talk to? Like, yeah. I think maybe, like, there was, like, some random chat room, right? So I'll talk to, like, Austin Penny yeah. Talks or something yeah. like that. But other than that, like, who, what are you going to do? You're going to move to, like, New York and, like, you figure out who you can, like, network with. But, yeah. I mean, you have to take advantage of this. Like, yeah. I think the fact that, that you even are profitable, like, this quick in, in trading is, like, it, it disgusts mm. me because it's, like, it took me so much longer. Like, it's so crazy, right? But it's, like, you are someone who just took such advantage of the opportunity in the world right now. And like, that's fucking yeah. Incre incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and seriously, I'm, I'm grateful to MIC because, uh, you know, if this wasn't working, I was like very close to, you know, just forget it because I was like, okay, I'm going to just like, you know, put all the money into a large gap and just like, you know, let it ride. Cause I was like, you know, I didn't want to waste any more of my time and the strategy work. And to be honest with you, I also get a lot of my, work ethic my hard work ethic for my dad because mm -hmm. he's my hero you know he moved oh, yeah. from uh, iran to dubai when he had no money he lost everything in iran there was a revolution and war going on so they bombed our house they you know burned down his restaurant so he moved without speaking a word of english or arabic to dubai and he started his own uh, restaurant with the little money that he had so seeing that and never hearing him complain or victimize himself that, oh, you know, I'm here, you know, I could have been in back home, never heard any word of complaint. It was just like him working and, uh, you know, he never had any hate towards um, Saddam Hussein government or anything that, oh, it was because of them. I've never heard him. Like, you know, if I meet an Iraqi guy, I'm not going to hate on him because of what they've done, you know, because growing up, that's my dad was like, you know, he had a choice. He could have either victimized himself yeah. that, oh, look what they've done to us. Or he could have like taken his own destiny in his own hands and built his life. And that's what exactly he did. So yeah. seeing those things make me 
realize and then, you know, to take advantage of the opportunities that we have. You know, we're living in an era that there's so much opportunity and there is absolutely no excuse. Whether you want to learn photography, whether you want to learn web design, SEO, all the information is out there. You could, I remember when I moved to States, I was living on $1,500 a month. And, you know, I was like, you know, doing a lot of sacrifices, doing a lot of different things in order to make it, you know, just like coming. And I think a lot of people in the developed countries, they don't uh, value the opportunities that they have. They take it for granted. Yeah. Um, I was just in Kenya. I visited a village uh, of the Maasai village. These kids, they were going to school. They were walking seven kilometers, which is like five miles each way from their village to school every day to just study. And yeah. here we have members complaining that, you know, what is Viva? Where, where they can just go to Google and, uh, you know, yeah. so, so some of the opportunities that we have and we, the stuff that we complain about is laughable to me. And, yeah. you know, me seeing all the struggles that my dad had. So when I moved to States and I saw all these opportunities, I'm like, oh, I can buy a house. We put in 5% down payment. Yeah. Oh, shit, sign me up. Oh, yeah. I can start my own business with like, you know, $250. Yeah. Sign me up. I mean, you know, the, the amount of opportunities that yeah. there is in the U.S., it's just incredible. It's like one of the best countries in the world. And seeing people complain about this system is laughable to me because there are people in my country that are, you know, dying out of hunger, dying out of, uh, you know, so many different things. And hearing this generation complain about this stuff that they're complaining is just unacceptable to me. I'm like, guys, you need to travel. You need to go see the world yeah, to yeah. start appreciating this stuff that you have and stop whining. For sure. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that is also a big problem is like definitely like people get so immersed in their own problems. People get so immersed in, you know, their own lives that they can't see out of their their bubble or where they're living. They don't understand, you know, that like there are like lots more going on in the world than, you know, your problem of, oh, I'm in a fight with my boss or my mom or my dad or whatever, right? You know, some people just can't see past their own kind of where they are and how blessed they are. Absolutely. That they cannot understand. And I think that is a big thing as well, where, you know, if you're living in the United States, in my opinion, you are blessed. If you're living in Canada right now, you are blessed. You're top one percent. Absolutely. Right. You're blessed already from there. The amount of opportunity that you have is insane. It's astronomical. And especially if you're in MIC right now, you are also blessed because there are tons of other places that you could be right now that are a hell of a lot worse, you know? Right. And so that's another thing, you know, just put in the work, be patient, trust the process. You know, if you're a short seller, short into resistance, don't go short, you know, way, way, way underneath VWAP. Don't go short, you know, in, in the wrong places. Be patient, wait for, you know, your setups, wait for your entry and then go and attack. And I think that is like, Another important part is just the patience, like we talked about. You know, if there's anything in this episode, it really showed me the level of patience that you have and that, you know, and also your mindset and where you are in your life to be able to get there that I think a lot of people are lacking. Yeah, I think uh, this is like one of my favorite episodes for the reason that I think there's like a lot of emotional, like good lessons. And like the one thing I just, I just texted myself that is, you just said like stop victimizing yourself and i think that there's so many traders like new traders who do that they like they don't they're not first of all appreciative of the opportunity they have but they're taking stupid losses and they're basically just saying it's like the market's against them everything's against them and like they're not owning up to their own shit and saying like you know what i need to work harder like what you just said about your dad i think that's a great example like you know he had shit held dealt to him it sucked and he still like busted his ass and like worked hard and like became successful so i think all the new traders who are watching this need to like kind of write that down, like stop victimizing yourself, like actually put in some work and like you're going to notice a result. Like it might not be as quick as you want, but. So some of the big losses that I've had, I've never reached out to anybody to complain. Oh, why did this happen? Yeah. I know exactly why the fuck it happens. Yeah. I broke my own rules. And the thing is like, you know, when I, when I posted, I remember one of the big losses that I had, I was like, I know exactly what I did. You yeah. know, I'm not, and the reason that I'm sharing is because I want to be transparent and I don't, I'm not looking for sympathy. You know, I'm not looking for sympathy from anybody. You know what I did? I'm posting it to make myself accountable. And sure. it, it, it's just, you know, you yeah. got, you got to put your ego aside. I've learned it. 
you know, we all make mistakes. The only thing is you can uh, make sure that, you know, you don't repeat those mistakes again. That's, uh, you know, that's the only thing that you, no. you have to do. Yeah, I love it. I, I love this. I think, uh, I think we're coming up kind of on our like hour mark. Yeah. And I think we've jammed a lot of good fucking info in this. I actually really, I think this is going to kick ass. I love this. I don't know if there's anything you guys want to add before you kind of wrap it up. Or? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, I think that this episode was great. It really is the patience and, you know, you really need to be able to sit tight in this game and not always be slamming keys all the time. And you really need Absolutely. to be patient and just your thoughts. What I would recommend as well, that's something that I've done. And it also affects me as well, seeing these big PNLs on Twitter. Get rid of all those noise. I don't have any social media. I go from Twitter from time to time, but I'm not active. Get rid of all of those uh, big PNLs. Because I remember like, you know, seeing Faye or um, Sir, uh, the Vic, yeah. Um, yeah. seeing like their PNL, I was like, oh my God, can I make like, you know, that kind of money one day? And, you know, and then starting out, like, you know, those would be like some of my slow days, you know what I mean? Yeah. And appreciate and, and just like, you know, just like Bao says, yeah. you know, you cannot go from making hundred dollar a day to $10,000 a day. You know, there's a slow, but you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, go step by step. Yeah. And everybody's journey is different. You know, Alex, look at what I love about Alex is him, and this is something that I'm still working on. He knows when to size up. Yep. That is a key, that is like a talent that he has that, you know, just like on his body, so he says like, size up to the beat and sculpt the rest or something like that. Size and realizing that how his p &L goes up and down, you know, there are days that he has like 50K and the next yep. day he could be at $700 a day. I'm yep. like, how does, you know, and that, this is amazing, you know? A fucking unicorn, dude, honestly. Like, it, it, you see that shit? Like, I I remember being on the phone with him the day he made, like, 50K when the, the corona, uh, like, sector crashed. And I was like, dude, how do you go, like, the next day until, like, you, you could make $100 or you could, like, lose $100? Like, I don't know. I just fucking do. Like, I just show up and, like, that's it. Like, I just know, like, I'm going to follow this, this basic fucking, like, idiot-proof process. And I'm, whatever it spits out, I'm going to take. Whether it's 50, 50K, 100K, a million, or if it's 10 bucks. I remember right? that day because I yeah. took that day off, actually. And the reason why I took it off is because I just saw him in chat, right? This is it. This is the day. Yeah. And all the other days that the EV stocks were running, I yes. never heard him say that. And exactly. when I saw him say, this is it, this is the day, I knew he was sizing up big. I knew what he was doing. And I just took the day off. I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm I remember it. Everyone asked me, why'd you take the day off? Why'd you take the day off? I'm like, bro, literally in the morning when Alex said, this is it, this, the sector's done. This is the day that it's crashing. I was like, okay, like I should not be longing these bounces. Right. This is, this is where I need to take a break. And, you know, thankfully I avoided all losses on that day. Watched him have a killer 50 K day. I was super happy for him, but I was also proud of myself to say, okay, absolutely. You know, he, you could tell he's sizing up. He didn't write in chat, oh, I'm sizing up. I'm using X. Yeah. He just fucking knew. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he's been trading. I'm like, Alex, let us know when you're sizing up. <laughs> Please tell me when they have to pay. It. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's funny as fuck. Like, it, again, like, I think that comes with screen time, like, experience. But, like, just Absolutely. knowing, like, this is the moment I'm going to drop my balls and I'm going to make this shit happen today. Yeah. Like, I mean... It's fucking awesome. I love it. That's why he doesn't have a lot of dancers. Like, you know, just because he makes 50K, he's not going to go, okay, I made it. So next day I'm going to go make like 60, 70K. Yeah. He doesn't try to keep repeating the same thing. He just waits for his spots yeah. really well. And that's something that I'm still trying to learn from. I'm like, yeah. you know, so that's something that I aspire to do. And uh, that's my goal. The name of this episode, man, is patience, discipline, and fucking uh, stop victimizing yourself. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, I think this definitely wraps it up. Yeah. So, okay. Great talk to you guys. Yeah, great talk with you, brother. You should go to bed. What time is it there? It's got to be like, what, 3 a.m.? Uh, no, it's uh, 11 p.m. Oh, that's it? Oh, okay. That's not bad. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's not bad. Then. I thought, for some reason, I thought this was like way later. But yeah, my girlfriend's probably bitching at me to get out of here. So <laughs> I gotta go. Great talking to you guys, and yeah. thanks for having me again. Perfect. Yeah, the episode, Harry, what does it usually take? Like 